Hey buddy, this is John, and today we're going to be going w over part two of our Hearthstone. Uh, I haven't done this well because I've been racking my brain over how I'm going to set this up, and I'm still kind of like over the iffy part, but I've kind of made some headway, and I would like to actually show that with you. Today we're going to be going over the whole card selection thing. So you pick your card, and then the enemy picks his card. Now the enemy will be a computer AI system. I am thinking about extending this to a multiplayer thing, so you connect with another person, and they see their, uh, they basically, it's kind of like this. Okay, I'm the player, so this is mine, but it'll be flipped over to where, actually, it'll, it'll be like the same setup. It's just the opposite side won't be the computer player. All right, so what have I been working on? So oh, thanks to some help and the Construct2 forum, I've constructed a random, uh, a ran uh, a basically random randomizer. Put it into simpler terms, you basically click a button and it will uh, choose anywhere between 0, 1, 2, and 3, meaning four cards. So you have card 0, 1, 2, and 3. You pick your card, it will then pick the computer will then pick its card at random and then it will compare okay is your card uh, whatever card that you pick is it more worth more or less than the card that I picked so the computer puts up a card that's worth five points well the uh, card that you picked is worth 10 points you automatically win now this is the default system we will be adding specialties to certain packs now this is going to be kind of a little bit stretched due to normally you you just see that when you have characters so uh like say you have uh you play some sort of rpg game and you have you're the main character but you can switch out like on, on lego games to different other characters setting up something like that i may change it into the future depending on how we do everything and I may change this setup so it's not going to be a clear cut here's the game it may be this is how you do one thing and then we expand on to it and so it's going to be different versions and flavors and variations I'm still working on this but this is our random gen uh, uh, random chooser it's at this point I'm keeping it basic in this video we're going to be expanding on this and the next one with different enemies I just clone these cards but expect a whole bunch more so I'm just baby stepping you in this video so just to let you know all right so I have cloned three enemy rat cards we have a your rat card so we all have rat cards your rat card though is better okay so um, I'm still getting to the point to warming up to per attack at this point it's instantly they attack and whatever card is more powerful wins at this point your card is more powerful at default so let's go over the code because there's not much and I want to make warm you guys up to it in case you haven't seen part one in case you do the little I button or whatever will show you to part one or the link in the description below or what have you okay so we have a three global numbers or variables one's called enemy number that's going to be basically whenever the computer decides to choose their card their number will be placed there so it's something to compare from global number player number same thing when you select your card your card number may be 15 12 32 what have you is going to choose that now later on we will be expanding this to from global player health global player attack global player immunity therefore we have more to actually play with because normally games have a ton of variables in them and this is a visualization scripting system so expect a ton of code out of this tutorial uh, and global number enemy card this me and that's actually the basis for choosing the enemy card. Now function on ran means that anything that is called on ran will be run. Uh, to put it in simplest term, uh, let's see, let's put this. So return to value one. Okay, so I set this up. I set this up to only to run return value to one instead of running it as a random variable mm -hmm. 
So right here, so uh, this is before I changed everything up. So on function ran, set return value to choose one, two, three. So it's going to choose zero, one, two, and three. So whenever I choose, um, now remember this isn't the modified version. So if I click this button, you notice I have a text icon right there. It's going to choose zero, two, three, you know, it's going to randomly choose it. So that means it works. What we now want it to do is associate it with a card. So we're going to go back over to here. So I told it just to choose one because I haven't built everything up yet because that's what we're going to do in the next video, adding more options and features. This is just to get us running and our feet wet. So I change things up a bit on this one. So if you choose, if you click yellow, it will choose the enemy card. I'm going to set it up to where it automatically chooses it when you choose yours. So on click, on basically be on you clicking your card, it's going to choose its card. So uh, on touch of yellow sprite, it's going to run on ran. It's going to select an enemy card function. So it's going to randomly choose a number and then we're going to set that to enemy card. That's just a text to make sure that's basically us testing it as we build the game. So if the system enemy card is 1, we're going to choose enemy card 1. And at this point, uh, every say 2 to 3 rounds, we're going to be starting a new round. So out of 4 rounds, whoever has 1. So okay, you have 3 to 4 cards per game. There are uh, each game is, is uh, around so you'll be running four cards in a game and then uh, those four cards will be one round so you choose four and then say you won three out of those four cards you have three points for the first round and then say you lost all uh, to the computer that would be in if you had four cards uh, plus he won the first one that would be five so you'd be down two a little bit complicated, but we're going to, like I said on the second episode, we're going to get to that. Okay, so we have enemy card one, two, and three. We're going to be adding another one in the next episode, as long also changing some uh, all the cards up and adding special abilities to them, if you so desire, which we can do in a pre-round setup, because you know your cards, you can add special abilities to them. Okay, so we have, if it chooses one, it's going to set the uh, position to the yellow dot, or yellow brick, right here. And when it does that, it's going to uh, basically collect the whatever number that card is worth and put it, see, so add five to enemy card. So that's why we have a variable up here saying enemy card. It's collecting uh, enemy card enemy number, actually it should be enemy number, I need to fix that um, so it collects that and then what it does is it then compares it so on touch of any, this is you selecting your card set sprite to red, add 10 to player number so enemy number, so okay enemy number done actually not that one that one so what's going to do is it's going to compare those numbers we got that one okay uh didn't need to change all of them but I did anyway uh touch so on touch of the big red dot it's going to wait five seconds if the player number is bigger than the enemy number the enemy card gets destroyed again we're going to add some i have some uh, special effects that are finally done which will cause the card to either catch on fire be whisked away or have a whole bunch of ice go straight through it or some other type of awesome effects that were rendered to d so what's going to happen is when we run layout we're going to choose our card so i'm choosing our Forest rat. Let's make that bigger. A uh, feral rat. Health 10, attack is 5, and we have a level 1. A feral rat from the wild woods. Selecting that one. And be, uh, so at this point, the player, uh, we would we probably. 
a fourth of a second to add some human reality to it or you mean humanistic tendencies or whatever for the computer and then once I click that it should automatically slide there something like that we're gonna cheat it and just select yellow now we want to battle so we select that it's gonna wait okay at this point I think I have it set up yeah enemy number So add five to enemy number. We want to add number. Uh, so player number is player number is greater than enemy number. It's going to wait 0 0.5 seconds and destroy. We're just going to delete that function so we don't have to wait and just say destroy. So that that select that. On touch, we're gonna do that on tap, and we're gonna set that back to. Hold on. Let me card. So select our card, let me select their card, hit that, it destroys that. Now again, we have some bugs, I need to fix it, but that's how it's set up. Uh, enemy number, so player number equals 10, so, okay, on touch a sprite 18, if player number is greater than enemy number, we're gonna wait 0 0.5 seconds and then destroy the card enemy card so if enemy card is 1 set position to 15 add 5 to enemy card at this point enemy number add 5 add 10 to player number okay so if player number is greater than enemy number is it wait 0 0.5 seconds to destroy so that should work choose our card choose their card battle at that point it doesn't work but it actually should all right guys I just want to get straight to this because I, I actually fixed our, the system it worked all I had to do was uh, I had these saying add to enemy card and it was literally just like it was adding five always like it was like 5 10 15 20 25 you know it was just continually doing that until it got into the thousands so the the enemy number was always going to be larger than the player number so uh, that was just a stupid mistake on my half what you have to do is set the number to 5 instead of adding it so what I did was I added a text box to tell us so right here in the first one says uh, text box 2 said to enemy number to tell me or tell you know tell you guys how to actually what number it is so if I run the layout I'm gonna select my card and then I'm gonna select enemy card. That's the enemy card right there. So I'm gonna choose card one. Boom. Because the enemy card is set to five. My card is set to ten. So what I'll do real quick is I'll set it to where if on touch whatever are uh, mine. Uh let's see, text one. So on add object, we're going to go to uh, text and we're going to set text to uh, what was it player player number done so add 10 to player number set text to player number so we run the game again uh, I'm gonna see choose mine so that set is 10 I choose any that set is 5 let's run the battle and then boom there we go okay so all I did guys was set enemy card enemy card equals one set enemy card to five so it's not add it's set so you're gonna set it to five and then you're gonna set the position of it and then you can forget about the whole text thing that's just too for you guys to see so on touch of the uh, battle button we're gonna wait one second the player card 
player number must be bigger than the enemy number, and if it is, it will destroy it. Later on, we'll deal with if it's big by so much, by so much percentage, then it's going to cause damage and not just outright destroy it. Um, so again, really sorry about this, guys, and now we're going to get straight back to the video. Good. But uh, that's something I'll fix in the next episode. I just wanted to show you guys. So if it actually doesn't go there, then that's just it going. That's it basically just saying there's zero in the uh, enemy slot. So yeah, of course I would win. But we actually know that's not true. So I'll look over that. Um, I'm going to put the code. No, I can't do that. Uh, I'll see if I can put the code down below. This is using sprites that I bought, and I don't know if the owner is going to let me post them down below. So, tutorial guide again, put your comments down below. Like and subscribe. I'll fix the bugs. Put up the second um, video up in a, a day or two. I'm going to see if I can get these out to where we actually have a video coming out every two days. We're going to be working on our GTA game and our tower defense game. So, so the three construct. Uh, two series, three, yeah, three construct two series that I'm going to be doing. Uh, as soon as they finish, as one, and then the other finishes, I may not renew another series or continue on. I'll continue with, on with construct two with specific videos. But at this point, I want to explore uh, other game engines. So I have a couple of game engines I would like to explore, like Unreal, Unity, Copper Cube. I want to explore Copper Cube a bit more. Maybe I'll go into Game Maker, but we will actually continue Construct 2 just like one series at a time instead of exploring into three different branches, like doing some sort of racer or physics based video game. Uh, so until next time, guys, remember to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.